Card Zero, Echoes of the 99, by August Servant, Volume 1. Lecture 33, Honesty versus Truth. If you were to ask me, innocence is what you call honesty that lacks the ability to protect itself. And the best example of this conclusion can be found in a typical child. Allow me to explain. Children are so honest with their feelings that most times it is even to their own detriment, loss, or disadvantage. And it isn't until they are able to make the connection between honesty and negative consequences that they begin to understand and employ the art of deception. Where true pain really doesn't hurt because who wants to get mocked for being weak? And true disappointment doesn't really matter because it's just easier not to need or have to depend on anyone. And since every promise broken amounts to some measure of paradise lost in the eyes of a child who is always keeping score, it becomes no wonder as to why rebellion is the most preferred emotion reached for by the immature mind wounded or betrayed by trust or the truth one too many times. Now then, Truth is not the same as honesty, because where things that are true are real, those things that are honest are genuine. Therefore, it is my opinion that honesty is the most precious thing, because it is such a rare find. And where honesty is as plain as it is easy, truth has an emotional accompaniment that can make things rather complicated. What do you mean? Consider this. People cheat on lie detector tests so readily that the results are not even admissible in a court of law. And why is that? How about? Because with enough prep beforehand, anyone can control their emotional state well enough to fool any machine pre-programmed to detect biological anomalies in the body. However, people that are honest with themselves are generally honest with others, almost to a fault with the unintended consequences being someone's feelings getting hurt, but like most surface wounds, are quickly forgotten. And why is that? Because in the straightforwardness of the exchange, lacking any emotional accompaniment that would otherwise send mixed signals such as sarcasm or apathy, the emotionally injured party can and will sense the sincerity of the messenger and recover just as quickly with a newfound measure of respect. Only the greater virtue can suppress the weaker claim. Since truth, the same as fear, is whatever you make it to be in your own mind or imaginings, it cannot be something that can be depended on. And this is the sole reason why American justice doesn't work. Because as stated before, facts are not determined by truth, but by power. And until the disenfranchised finally come to accept the fact that while the truth will set you free, spiritually speaking, it can neither save nor protect you, they will just have to content themselves with hoping for a justice that does not exist while praying for a change that only they can bring. It is a fact that the weaker people think you are, the more of their true face they show you, with no apology, regret, or shame. And since we can only communicate as well as we are able to listen, how can anyone not feel confused or angry when confronted by a hostile presence, tempered only by a passive-aggressive attitude meant to be polite, yet only adding insult to injury? And the more intelligent you are, the more they hate you for it. Because in realizing that you can plainly see their weapons, they can't openly use them against you and thus must treat you as an equal as much as it pains them to do so. Which, in the end, really doesn't change a thing, because all the effort in the world will not cause oil to mix with water. And thus, the only thing that changes are the tactics employed to undermine and marginalize you. With the moral here being, the Game of Thrones never changed. It's just that today, we call it business, nothing personal. No rest for the righteous. Two things are certain in this world, good and evil. 
Therefore, when you are not counting your blessings or giving thanks, you need to be watching your back and training in preparation for the coming attack. Also, while it is said that fear and anger can bring out the worst in us, it is not the direct attacks that you need to be concerned about. Because the more cultured and refined you become, you will begin to realize that the envy of others can be just as dangerous as fear or anger. But where you may be experienced in combating the frontal assaults that those two emotions brought in the past, the attacks of envy are indirect and can come at you sideways like a crab's pinch that you never saw coming. But what Christians need to remember is that there is peace in this world as much as there is conflict. And since we go in the direction we face, we must keep God in Christ consciousness at the forefront of our minds. Always. And to do this, we must be mindful of the following. Only a weak-minded person would take offense or feel threatened by the assertion of others. While the wise understand that since words have only as much power as we give them, it is totally within our conscious capacity to choose the meaning behind the quips, remarks, and jokes that others may hurl at us. But more importantly, where is it written that we must respond? Don't forget to employ the shield of apathy and just let all of the negative energy that people take from their own life force to put into their venomous words bounce right off of your shield like a gnat against the windshield of a car doing 80, and take joy from it, even as you do it, leaving them to honestly wonder if you are even aware that you have been insulted. With the moral here being, you have a choice when something bad happens to you. Will you become wiser or wounded? Wealthy people are as rare as honest people. Or some might call an honest person a glutton for punishment. Providence will always favor the courageous strong enough to champion that which is right. And for the professional and successful alike, the truth may be uncomfortable in the short term, but it's preferable to the long-term frustration, anger, and struggle that come from a lack of awareness. Also, even though honesty is as powerful as it is perceived as a weakness, it can still heal in as much as it can be weaponized against us. Still, the plus side is, some might say it is that risk alone that adds credence to the righteous and makes them even more sought after for their counsel. With the reason being, though we all want the truth to the extent of demanding that it be freely given to us, how ironic that it is the last thing that most are willing to part with for no other reason than the fear of either total exposure or non-acceptance. Honesty is a natural disinfectant. Honesty in word or deed carries with it its own vibrational frequency, which can be felt by anyone consciously attuned to the heart chakra. But even if someone cannot consciously discern the honesty of another, it does not negate the positive impressions being made on and in the observer. And it is in this way that honesty nourishes all that it touches, even self. And until you can be honest with yourself, you will never deal honestly with another. Destined to walk a road to nowhere, looking for that which you are not worthy to possess. Let's face it, people want to be around those that make them feel good. And that is why an honest person is never without friends or aid while a man with no honor is like a ship adrift at sea with no port that will have her. The Cost-Benefit Analysis Sarcasm is the death of sincerity and demagnetizes the power of our words, even as it depletes the speaker of his or her power of influence due to the duplicitous nature of their words, always leaving the question in the air and thus slowing down the productivity of others. Let it be known and understood that truth is a living presence among us that needs to breathe and wants to circulate, 
Because the more range it is given to flow and make contact with others, the more powerful and stronger it becomes by virtue of its lasting influence. Like a breath of fresh air or a calming presence in a time of turmoil. And just like water is the death of earth and fire the death of air, sarcasm constricts, smothers, and works to weaken any truth spoken, thereby leaving the speaker powerless and unable to inspire others. Perhaps this sentiment was best conveyed in the famous line by Shakespeare, when in Hamlet he asked Polonius, saying, To thine own self be true, and it must follow as night to day that thou canst not then be false to any man. With the moral here being, Integrity grows from honesty, even as it is being watered with truth. And God does so love a righteous soul. Salah. The Warrior's Creed 1. The greatest gifts to us in this world are two, our greatest love and our greatest enemy. And it is the truest warrior that discovers them both within themselves. And it is in this way that the warrior understands that this life is actually the reflection of ourselves. And every experience in it, the degree in which we are able to accept who we are or the truth of this proposition. 2. Any true master is still a student. They just get their inspiration from a higher source. The reason being, learning never ends, only the desire to know more. Thus, to the warrior, curiosity is a muscle, and one must use it or lose it. 3. Humility and love for all creatures. Forgiveness and respect for all friends. These, the learned have said, lengthen life. For in their practice, there is no friction or resistance. Therefore, let these virtues be your shield, that the warrior may recognize you, not as an innocent, but as a kindred spirit. My creed. 1. The Lord said to me, My words are for you, not for them. You are not my messenger and my vessel. Therefore, I command thee, hold my waters, and I will fill thee with an ocean of wisdom. And when you are fit to bursting, let that be the time to teach and share with others, if you wish to do so. Two, hush the voice of why with I am. For to deny God, is to deny all hope of ever truly knowing. We are as small as our temporal life, intelligence, and as great as our spirit will allow, faith. For angels are not made, they are born, and then raised by being possessed of a quickening, a human soul, that only God can decree. Three, if you are not willing to bleed for it, it will only hurt you and you will curse every wound until it either breaks you or make you face what you have always known. Thus, without conviction, choice is just another false hope or empty gesture. Dialogue. It doesn't matter how right or justified the decision, if it still feels wrong. And because hindsight is twenty twenty, you only get one time to learn that lesson. With the moral here being, the words of your inner voice are always stronger, nobler, and wiser than any action you can take, impulsive or otherwise, and we would all do well to listen to it. Furthermore, if we're being honest, our friends and family remember our failures and tragic moments better than we do, and it doesn't matter how much we work on ourselves to put the past behind us they will never let us forget. Opting to hold on to our tender moments as a person would collect weapons, that they may conveniently use them against us whenever they begin to feel inferior, jealous, 
or envious of our success or good fortune. Thus, make God and God alone your sole confidant when you wish to confess your secrets. And then rest easy all the days of your life, confident that your secrets will be safe with him. Scripture 1. Psalms 22.10 I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. 2. Psalms 27.14 Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. 3. Psalms 34.21 Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. Epilogue While it was my intention to produce a complete work of 99 lectures, due to time constraints and a lack of funding, I had to break this manuscript down into thirds, which amounts to a three-part series outlining 33 lectures in each volume, ending in the third volume. My hope is by publishing volume one and promoting it just so that I will be able to raise enough funds, $50,000 to be specific, through sales and donations to produce and publish the next corresponding volume. With the logic here being, if I can support myself from the proceeds generated by volume one, then I will not have to busy myself with the mundane trappings of life regarding food, clothing, and shelter, and can be about the business of completing this manuscript. That's the plan anyway, Lord willing. In the meantime, in addition to this piece, I would invite anyone to purchase one of my previous works from a collection of over 24 titles currently on sale at Amazon.com. Thank you. I submit to you, be worthy. Please allow me to introduce myself. You can call me August Servant, and it is a privilege to bring to you my captured Echoes of the 99 by way of Card Zero, the Fool.